In this unit, we're going to talk about the deposit institutions and its role in the economy. How do they contribute into money creation? What do you mean by deposit institutions? It's a firm that actually accepts deposits from households and businesses and make loans. We're going to focus on commercial banks as they are the most famous deposit institution in Egypt. So when we talk about deposit institutions, we're talking about a private firm or a public firm. This firm, its main function is to receive money from people that want to make savings and to make loans to people that need money. Let's see this figure to understand how does banks function. So our friend in here is to deposit $100 dollars to the bank the banks in turns will make a loan for households and firms they will receive interest over the loan at the at the value of 115 and the bank in turn will pay the depositor a return on his savings which is 109 and the bank will get the difference between the interest over the loans and the interest that it paid to the depositor this is the main function of banks receiving deposits and making loans and making profit from the difference between the money they are receiving the interest that they are receiving over the loans and the money they are paying the depositors there is a, a little detail that we ought to talk about that what if someone want to withdraw his money and the bank has already made loans with this money so let's take let's let's take an example so if this our friend here has deposit $100 to the bank and the bank gave this $100 as a loan however our friend the depositor changed his mind and he want to withdraw his money back in this case the bank will have no money to give it back to the depositor however fortunately this is not the case because the money the bank actually is obliged to keep part of its deposits in the shape in shape of cash so the bank cannot loan 100 percent of its money it has to keep part of his money as a reserve so in our case the bank actually has to keep 10% of its deposits as cash and it can lend the rest of the deposits which will be in our case $90. So banks in order to achieve, to achieve their objectives they have to make they have to make loans with a higher interest than the interest that they are paying for their depositors they have also to balance between profit and broodness. They are not dealing with their money, their own money. They are, they are actually making business with other people money. So they have to keep to be careful. So one of the tools to actually put some safety to the money of the people is that the central banks in every country will ask the banks to keep part of their money in cash and not to make 100% loans. Now, let us talk about the function of the banks in our economies and how important is banks in our economy. So, banks actually create liquidity, minimize the cost of obtaining loans, Money, minimize the cost of monitoring borrowers and pool risk. So let's talk about creating liquidity. If you are at the mall, you like this pair of shoes, you want to buy it, you, put, you take a look over your wallet and there is nothing, what will you do? Simply, you will go to ATM machine, put in your, your card, get some money, buy the shoes. If there was no banks, no ATMs so you will not buy this shoe the sales of the shop will go down 
as the sales of the shop will go down, it means that it will get out of business or maybe reduce the number of workers. This means less jobs, less income, and recession into the economy. However, because there are banks, they are helping to facilitate the creation of liquidity, injecting, injecting activity into the economy. Minimize the cost of obtaining funds. If you are to, if you want to invest your money, banks is one of the way to actually, and a safe way uh, uh, to invest your money. Meanwhile, if you want to get a big loan, you may not, you may not found a lot of friends that are interested in giving you a loan. However, banks will actually gather all of the people that wants to give or lend other people money under one roof, under a safe environment. So this will actually minimize the cost of obtaining funds and minimize the cost of monitoring borrowers. What about pooling risk? If you lend your money to one person and this money and, and this person was bankrupted, what will happen to your money? Your money will vanish. However, in the case of banks, if one of their creditors went out of business, this doesn't mean that they are out of business because there are other creditors that will actually cover for the one that failed or got bankrupted. And this is what we call it pooling of risk. Instead of putting the, all the eggs in one basket, we actually split it over a different baskets. As banks are working with the money of others, they have to be under heavy regulations and under the control of a higher authority. In our case, this higher authority or the main player in the field of controlling, controlling banks are the central banks. Central banks actually give privilege for depositors and also put banks under close eye to, to guarantee that they are doing their jobs in a prudent way and they are not risking the deposits of people. Those rules that the banks are under will come under two categories, deposit insurance and balance sheet rules.